But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no click the bell. So say the the news to our on subscribe to me. I can in terms of what the affair. So make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment? No one share. I'm a full frost on Saka. Now comment session. How so? No person watch it. I'm a bit to me. I do. I do. I'm sure. I to hold on. Now man for so. I'm a bit kind kind. Now only say pen dream TV there. Any in some of your cause or Ghana and politics. I'm only a day by day. Saka I need the abroad. Tina so. Me me video I in Saka. I person no chair. I need a day by day. Tii. Me one more day. I show so. I be a video we. I'm an SEA we. Now watch it. I'm a bit. I'm a comment session. I see. Yeah, I mean, let's start from the very beginning. I mean, this was a very crucial election. This was an election whose result could upset the balance in parliament. And if the balance in parliament was upset, it was going to make it extremely difficult for government to carry out its, its duties, policies, and so on. Because as it stands now, Parliament is fairly balanced. The majority has 137 seats, and the so-called minority also has 137 seats. And this could have upset that balance completely. So it was a very crucial election by all means. And I'm not surprised that so much attention was paid to this particular election. In fact, this election, perhaps, was far more crucial than the Asin North election, given the fact that uh, the previous member of parliament was a government or MPP member of parliament. You know, so that's the context within which we should be looking at this election. Now, the results indicate that uh, the NPP candidate won the election. But the results must still be very troubling for the new patriotic party. We have seven months to a major election. And in its stronghold, what it calls its stronghold, one of its strongest holds, it is getting just over 50% of votes. That's exceedingly troubling. Considering the fact that in the last parliamentary elections, the party had about 80% of total votes. You know, so there's a significant drop in the votes. That is serious, you understand? And if that trend mm -hmm, is replicated across the Ashanti region, MPP has lost the next election completely, no doubt at all. There are some important factors also that we need to look at. And one of them is the role which was played by persons who were very active in the new patriotic party, who now appear to have shifted to the butterfly, the alliance of revolutionary change. And I mentioned in particular somebody like Hobson Adoye, who was the lead person for the independent candidate, you know, Adoye, in the coalition center. What does that tell us? Now that tell us that there's a body of disgruntled persons within the new patriotic party who are going out to make sure that they wrestle power from the new patriotic party or at least they minimize the chances of the new patriotic party winning the elections. And if that happens to be the trend, what are the consequences for the elections of December 7th, 2024? The other thing for me which was exceedingly significant was just the fact that the top hierarchy of the party was in the constituency. The national chairman was on the ground. The president was there. The vice president was there. Everybody who mattered was there. And yet, this is the outcome. Something is happening, and it's important that political watchers, especially the new patriotic party, take note of this significant, you know, developments. Andy, I was most disappointed in the statement made by His Excellency the President at one of the campaign rallies. I was so horrified by that statement. Now, here's the President who says that, look, 
No development project can be undertaken if it doesn't approve it. I wonder why the president would do that to himself. So by implication, all the communities where the roads are bad and have not been acted upon, all the communities which do not have basic facilities and so on, he is the one who has not approved that those projects should be undertaken. And this is coming from himself. And I'm wondering, why? Why would the president do this to himself? But there are other implications which are even more worrying. Here is the president describing himself, not somebody describing no, the president himself describes himself as an NPP president. Hey! NPP president, president for NPP. So, those who are not members of the new patriotic party, they don't have a president. But does, does that not sit into, you see, um, there have been previous instances where the president has made statements and uh, people have come to say that, oh, it was, uh, the president was joking. It was some of the calf thing that perhaps he misspoke. But from what you're saying, the analysis you're making, I mean, there obviously is a certain trend. So what are the two other examples? What he said when he visited the um, flooded area. And then what he said when he met the Ekonfi chiefs. I mean, that clearly sits into. So it's, it's no longer a one-off thing. Yeah. But that's the problem. Yeah. Making. It's no longer one of So them. you have a president uh, who does not see himself as president of Ghana. He sees himself as president only for the NPP. And, and it's frightening. But it doesn't end there. He says, look, if you have problems, you know, if you have, if your constituency is underdeveloped, if your area is underdeveloped, if you don't have roads and so on, and you want action to be taken, you have to realize that action can only be taken if you have an NPP member of parliament who comes to speak to an NPP president. Wow! I think this is the greatest devaluation of the presidency. And I'm, I'm really shocked and surprised that these statements came from the mouth of His Excellency Leonardo Dankwa Kupado, who has been in the political game long enough hmm, at least to realize how damaging this statement can be to himself and to the new patriotic party. And you see, he ought to have taken a cue from a similar statement which was made by one of Ghana's ambassadors to South Africa. And the anger that that excited in society. Is it Mr. E.C. Martin? One ambassador to South Africa made a similar statement. Okay. And the public anger. But the president ignores the public anger and repeats the same words. And I, I am indeed horrified. I mean, if this is where we've come to, then this country has a huge problem to deal with. Where presidents no longer see themselves as president of the republic, but as president of political parties and so on. It's... It, 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 clearly unpardonable. But you see, I don't know if you're going to discuss separately the statement which was issued by the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs. And if you're going to discuss that separately, I'll put it aside. You can add that. Okay. But here is the Ministry <coughs> of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs who says that it is clarifying the tradition of respect for authority and so on. And makes the point that because the president, according to the statement, because the president is, 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 it says the president shall take precedent over all other persons in Ghana, and so on. Unfortunately, the president does not see himself as such. He's an MPP president. So if you're a CPP man, he's not your president. You are not required to accord him the respect that the Ministry for Chieftaincy Affairs insists that we should accord him. Yes, he's not your president. He's an MPP president. I thought this was particularly damaging. But let's put that aside. The other thing that was thrown up by this election 
<laughs> it's the rush to undertake road construction and so on. What has happened to all the projects that were started at Asin North? We will come to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for me, the rush to undertake projects, to repair roads and so on, sends a clear signal to the electorate. And, Doc, you know what signal it sends? That the possibility to undertake these projects exists and yet they were not done. Yes. Okay? That the resources of the project exist and they were not utilized in, 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 in development and so on. Now, the electorate will be angry. They will be annoyed by this insult to them. And yet the politicians cannot read this. So they rush to undertake road construction and do all manner of things and so on in order to confirm that they have been negligent in the performance of their duties and so on. And, hey, this is what the politicians want to do and so on.